24th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. We have a lot to get through tonight, so let's keep that in mind as we go through things. Uh, first up is a continued public hearing for docket 3348, uh, <clears throat> which is 833 Mass Ave, the Atwood House. So I ask uh, Bob and Essie, counselor, and your clients to come on up. Yes. Introduce yourselves and tell us where things are as of today. Thanks for coming back. For sure. Yep. Good to be back. Uh, my name is Robert Anessi, and I do represent the petitioner, uh, Jeff Noyes, the owner of the uh, property, is seated to my left. Emily Driscoll, who works in the design office, is to his left, and Monty French, the architect, is to my right. We were here last time, we were asked to do some rethinking uh, and thinking uh, as far as the project is concerned. Uh, we were also asked to focus our attention, if we could, on trying to come up with a schedule with respect to what we might be uh, doing in terms of trying to develop the site. What we have done is we have come up with a, a couple of different schemes that we would like to at least discuss uh, uh, this evening. Uh, this is not for definitive purposes because we haven't even gotten to that point ourselves. We met briefly with Kin, uh, not briefly, we met for more than an hour, okay, with Kin and with uh, Mike Champa from the building department. Uh, and Mike Champa is going to be rather pivotal because zoning is going to be an important part of what we're trying to do in terms of developing the site. We're beyond whether the building is structurally sound or not. We say it is, okay? We agree with the structural report, which I believe you have, dated June 26, 2018, that was uh, uh, addressed to the building department. Uh, I've gone through the ARB decision again from 2009, just to make sure that I knew what I'd be talking about here tonight as far as the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the history is concerned. Uh, we do know that the property is on the significant list, okay? We do also know that the ARB decision of 2009 indicated that the building itself did not have any historical significant uh, 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 issues, okay? Uh, Notwithstanding that, we know we have to go back before historical because we're on the list at this point. It, okay. no, we, I'm sorry, we talked about that last time. It was on the historical yes, list. Yes, it is. At that, I just said at, that. At that. No, no, time. at that time it was as well. It yes. was in the document. No, it was then. Yeah, it was okay, in the ARB decision. Said, but I just yes. want to make sure that it's that's right in the decision. Thank yeah. you. I, just, I, I thought I said that. You said the opposite, but. Uh, I just whatever. To well, it's on the list, okay? It was on the list then, yep. and we have to go back before historical. Yes. Yes. But they did say in 2009 it had no historical significance, okay? Uh, I think probably what they meant was that maybe the history of the building had some significance in terms of who might have occupied it, okay? But the building itself did not have any uh, uh, significant interest, okay? But again, we know we have to deal with that. We will deal with that, okay? Uh, what we uh, are here about uh, tonight is we hear about uh, special condition number five. And special condition number five basically uh, indicates that uh, we, would, uh, we should be focused on developing uh, the Atwood House, uh, doing our best to retain the attributes of the uh, Atwood House, which I think we're trying to do, okay? We are dealing with a very challenging building in terms of uh, trying to come up with a plan that would make sense in terms of developing, uh, development. Uh, we're in a mixed-use district, okay? So we know we have to have at least some residential, we know we have to have at least some commercial to be able to satisfy that aspect of the bylaw. Uh, Monte has come up with a number of different schemes, okay, which he would like to put before you simply for the purpose of discussion uh, this evening, okay, and try to get some uh, feedback from you folks as to what your reaction might be to what we might be proposing. One of the uh, uh, things that Monte has done, by the way, 
is he has uh, moved the building out closer to Mass Ave. Okay? And he's done that to try to be consistent with the location of the CVS building, uh, which is out closer to Mass Ave. One of the challenges with respect to that issue is that when the CVS building was developed, uh, there was a sewer easement that basically was uh, constructed in the front portion of the lot. So if we're going to do that, that would be something that we would have to deal with uh, as far as our plans are concerned, uh, and as far as construction is concerned. But uh, with that having been said, I'd like Monte to talk about uh, what uh, the schemes are. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bob. So from last meeting, I know that we talked about timeline and schedule as something that you would like us to address. Um, so I'd like to catch you up on what we've been doing since the last meeting to now. And that's outlined here in the letter, or the narrative that we provided. Um, so we had to start by collecting proposals from various um, contractors to clean out the building. There's a lot of debris and some other things in there that wasn't really safe for us to be walking around and um, needles and such. So we had somebody come in, uh, finally got a contractor that wasn't too busy to come in there and actually do the work, got it cleaned out, made safe. Um, Emily and myself did a photography survey and then also measured out the full house, the existing conditions, exterior and interior, so you could see in the package that you have in front of you the plans that we drafted from that. Um, and, and also took note of all the conditions in the house. Um, and then by that you can see some of the photos. There's nothing in the house that we could see that had architectural relevance worth keeping, but also noted that pretty much the whole house in itself, in terms of materials, exterior cladding, uh, the, the, the shingles, the sheathing, the trim, the windows, the roofing, the interior drywall, gutters, trim boards, they're pretty much all shock gone. Not anything worth keeping or being able to be renovated. Um, so that's kind of a foregone conclusion. And then you'll notice by the plan, which I think it's great to look at the plan, it has a central stair. And the central stair leads to a, an intermediate level that's some it's between the first and second floor, which really is not, I mean, it's kind of really compromises the, the layout of the, of the existing house and is not conducive towards, uh, you know, kind of reprogramming the existing conditions. Um, and then moving into the basement, the basement, I think, is... I think considered stable uh, and sound, but it leaks a lot. Uh, it's a granite, boulder, and mortar uh, foundation system, which is pretty typical for having leaking issues and things like that. Um, so again, trying to remediate that in some fashion, you know, you'd have to unearth all the way around it to do some sort of uh, repair to the foundation to prevent it from leaking. Uh, there are methods to do it from the interior, but those are never 100% fail safe. Um, so in reviewing the whole project with Jeff and Bob and others, um, it just financially looking at the amount of work it would take just to keep the building after it's taken down basically the framing after you remove all the materials and having to reframe the floors uh, to get the, the more efficient layout is just financially something that uh, was not feasible in our mind. Um, so that being said, we moved forward in looking at things that would serve the community better in terms of providing a mixed use development uh, that would provide small office uses for some of the local uh, businesses and people in the area as well as residential. Um, and then also, the other part about it is bringing it forward, making it part of the streetscape. Uh, right now it's kind of pushed back, you know, it's not really relevant, but bringing it out, making it part of the streetscape, being more contextual with the area, uh, and serving the community in that fashion. Um, so we looked at a couple schemes that are in here. They're really just conceptual massings to show like what we mean by shifting it forward. Um, Can you say what page you're going to be on? I, I'm on page 17. Thank you. 
So page 17, again, the mass is a conceptual mass to show a couple different things. Pulling it forward, again, thinking about the streetscape of Broadway, or I'm sorry, of Mass Ave, um, and how things are situated um, in an urban design aspect. Um, and then also making it a little bit closer, building it a little bit closer to CBS, trying to give us enough area to do the things that we need to do to get enough commercial space and residential space in there for mixed use. Um, so that's one scenario. That, so within that kind of layout, we looked at a scenario where it was clear floor, first and second, that would be some sort of commercial or office use. And then the third floor would be a number of residential um, units. Uh, and then that's flats, essentially. Or we could look at a scheme where the whole front end, all three floors, was commercial, and then the rear, all three floors, is residential um, to kind of privatize the uh, So those are the basic concepts. Uh, you know, the shift, the, the increase in size, um, and the situation on the site. And then just to give you an idea of the whole um, positioning of the mass, uh, the massing on the site, and what I mean by streetscape, by pulling it out, uh, there's a couple of bird's eye you know, perspective uh, conceptual images of the site with the mass on it uh, to give you an idea of what we're, we're thinking. Again, we think that this is something that rather than going through the pain of trying to get some small yield out of the house as it is right now, basically rebuilding it, uh, which is just financially, I, I think is not something that anyone would want to take on. Um, this, I think, is something that could serve the community better, and I think it also is something that would be in better keeping with the urban design aspect. Andrew, yes. I would say I would agree with you, based on our last meeting, that there is a lot of work to be done here. It doesn't make uh, financial sense to do essentially uh, renovate the whole thing and and the yield which you get out of it doesn't make sense. But can I, can I suggest would you make, would you be able, be uh, be okay to put it up for sale? It's the building if someone wanted to buy the building for a dollar. The building's been available it's, for years. It, uh, well, let's make it public and let's let's put it out so that. If someone really wanted to save that building, they can. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's Just make like that, the Myrak property. Well, let's, well, let's, 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 yeah. let's, well, can we somehow make that public or advertise it somehow? Or? That is up to the private yeah. property owner. Yeah. Would you be able to, would you be able to do, yeah. will you do that? If you, say, if you say, you know, and I, I, said, I said, we went around and around on this uh, last time we met, but I, I think we'd like to give the opportunity for if somebody out there who, who wants to save the building can. Yep. And just put 30, it. 30 years ago, it was going to be moved across the street. And the contractor reneged on his deal and failed. OK, well, let's see what we we can find some braver souls per, now. Particularly so if someone thinks it has significance, OK, historically, OK? Uh, if they want to move it, uh, we'll let them have it, OK? They can take it. 100%. Okay. At least make that clear because I yeah, think yeah. that would be a real good thing if, you know, given the ability for someone to do that if they really wanted to do that and, and instead of just having it all. We could save that. Well, yeah. Yeah. How do you do that where at the same time we want them not to go slow but to move forward? I mean, how do they do both things at the same time? Well, I think if I if I could. Um, so we would have to go, I think that that's the other part of the timeline. We don't really have dates set to that timeline, but in this package we, we kind of mentioned that, you know, we'll have to go through a, a phase of other meetings with you all in terms of design and, and all those sorts of things. Yeah. So, you know, there's a process that we have to go through on this project, whereas the, the building can be moved in that time period before we get a permit there can be something done in that we are talking some period of time and that can happen during that period of time all we have to know is that somebody has an interest in doing it how we get that out to the public I mean is 
I don't mind, uh, you know, even contacting the advocate if it, becomes, if it comes down to that and saying to the advocate, could you, could you put something in the paper about that and invite uh, interested individuals to, in fact, contact us if they're interested in taking it up and moving it. And if there's any other local publications or even greater yeah. that you would recommend, I'll show you one from your here tonight. Oh, I don't think so. Well, I would, it's on camera now. But I would uh, give the Historic Commission a call and, sure, and ask yeah. them because they probably have resources that we don't have here right. or connections that we don't have here, and they might know people that, that do this kind of stuff. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not in that uh, circle, so I don't know. Right. But uh, to answer your question, I think it can be done in the permitting process. Um, having if someone wanted interested, in it, they could. It's a rather large house to move as one piece. It's it's probably gonna have to be divided into quarters or halves or whatever. Um, which could be, you know they've done that uh, over at uh, on Mass Ave on um, What's that school that's right there? Leslie, the one, Leslie, yeah. correct. Yes, the one right on Mass Ave. And, and, uh, but that, these move next door. Yeah. yeah, but that was a big, big house too. You can move, I mean, I've, there's been several houses of that scale moved mm -hmm. in Cambridge as well. Well, mm -hmm. you can do it. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's reasonable. It's just, financially, if someone wants to mm -hmm. uh, take that kind of money in it, you know. Well, I think we've, we've seen the we record tonight, heard on the record tonight, Mr. Noyes and his counsel saying that there was an offers for the property, for the, for the house. House, not the property. For the house, not the property. Um, so <clears throat> that, that option is certainly out there. And, um, you know, based on, I'll, I'll let the other members of the board have an opportunity to speak, and I'll let the public have an opportunity to speak to as uh, <clears throat> required to do. <clears throat> but I think I've encouraged that there's some progress here. Um, the, the fact that we were just handed this packet tonight doesn't comply with our usual rules for uh, accepting materials. Usually it was we just on the press, That's okay, later fine. today. So That's we'll the take these, we we'll take these in, we'll tonight. take them under consideration. We can also tell that we're down a member of the board this evening who yeah. uh, will presumably be back with us next time. Uh, but we'll have these posted provide them to the department electronically because yes. they can be posted online. We'll do that first thing tomorrow morning. Appreciate that. We can have you back yeah. at a future date after you've had some further discussions. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say other than that. I need to have some time to dig into this. Again, I'm encouraged that there's something happening here. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more as far as design and plans. Uh, you know, Looking at this, I get that it's just a massing study, but my fear is with any massing study, Somebody who doesn't deal with this all the time is going to say, oh my God, they're going to build a big, <clears throat> big rectangular box. Yeah. So. And we have to be careful with zoning as well. Yeah, so, understood. Uh, I'm understood. anticipating a further meeting with Ken and with Mike Champa from the building department as well, so we can brainstorm this even more and get some ideas, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me share a few things with you right now. It's just, yeah. you know, where your architect said, let's bring the building up for to engage and act activate the street. And I think you can pick up on uh, CVS uh, has a colonnade there. You can maybe have a colonnade mm -hmm. on the lower floor that you know, invites you in and out, kind of. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You can pick up on that, and then. And, and I think that there's a way to do it that sort of respects the existing flow of the street, but really adds to it as well. You have the CVS property. You have the high school. Uh, you have the new high school that's coming. You have the church on the other side. I think you can do that in a respectful way, in a way that that stands out. I like the idea of a mixed use building mm -hmm. on the property. Um, I like the idea of mixed use throughout town, period. I mean, that's clear. Uh, but I'd like to see more about what you intend to do there. Um, <clears throat> my, my understanding too, and, and Bob will direct this to you, is that there are some restrictions on what can go into a commercial space there based on the lease with CVS? Yes, is that there, the is. there are, as that. a matter of fact. We have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably going to be uh, office, okay? Mm -hmm. Rather than uh, retail, rather than uh, selling food products, selling pharmaceutical products, selling things of that nature. But that anything that CVS sells yeah. cannot be yeah. sold. Yeah. Yeah. That's Simply stated. And that's pretty much everything. That's pretty much everything. Sure. Okay. So, um, Kim, did you have anything else? 
just mm -hmm. uh, one little line about, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at the massing, you yeah. see the, the CBS massing. Yeah. And if you just take that you know, eave on the roof line, you sort of, yeah. just, I just make that massing model look so much more fitting. Yeah. yeah, I think we would get into a whole streetscape study yes, and, yeah. and look at it because that, that, I mean, that's the first one is to bring it forward and know you study the streetscape and how the whole mass out is situated. And I think it's a great opportunity to have this as what could be on the rest of MassF. Mm -hmm. and, and I think us as a board is very interested in that aspect of it. So. And we did give you a schedule in terms of what we're trying to aim toward here. Uh, it's, it's in your package. Yeah, it's it's second, page. Second, second page. Yeah. Second page, yeah. Okay. I believe. Okay. Uh, Gene, do you, do you want to? Do you see it? Yeah. Well, let Rachel go first. No, I mean, it's, again, having just received the package, it's very difficult to provide any meaningful feedback. So I, I'd like some time to, to go through. I think um, whether I think that aligning with the CVS location, as you've shown it here, is the correct move or not, I, I really would like to spend some time in looking at the at the We're looking for your input. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything to add other than we need to figure out how to make sure you're on a schedule that gets yes, this yeah. done in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, and, and again, I'm going to open it up to, to public comment to have them ask questions and, and go through the, uh, the process. But let's think about a date when these folks can come back um, with, with what we're looking for. Or will we have a reasonable time? Um, we're also into town meeting time, which means that we're going to be very busy for the next six weeks. And the request is that they provide the materials in advance. Yes. You'll have them in advance. So that we yes. have an opportunity yeah. and the public right. so let's, let's an opportunity to review it. Let's come back to a date and I'll open it up to the floor for public comment. Uh, please raise your hand. I will call on you as I see you. Uh, stand up, state your name and address for the record, whether you are uh, an Arlingtonian or not, uh, or at least this Arlington or not, and uh, we'll get through the process. But yes. Um, I'm uh, John Atwood, uh, grandson of the late Dr. Charles uh, Atwood, and my, my local address is uh, 60 Pleasant Street, um, Arlington. And uh, I grew up in this town, and uh, when my grandparents sold the house at 821 Mass Ave in 1953, I happened to be living there because my grandfather had suffered a stroke himself, and he was in a nursing home. So my mother and I moved in with uh, my grandma Atwood. And uh, when they sold the, the place uh, where they had lived for 50 years, and my father and his two brothers grew up, and I was now living, uh, they had a plan which was to keep the medical aspect, and that they sold it to a friend of the family, Dr. McCarty, and he was going to have doctors uh, make have doctors medical offices there. And this was done initially, and then unfortunately Dr. McCarty died young, and that was the end of the plan. So things have been unsettled ever since up, up to this date. And I realize that it's a very difficult problem how to uh, repurpose it, but um, what I heard tonight was, uh, I think, somewhat encouraging if we could have a, a mixed use, um, possibly residential and offices, anything to do with uh, medical and uh, pharmacy would, would be uh, good uh, in the outward spirit, I think. But um, of course, uh, a lot of work does need to be done to bring it up to modern standards, I'm sure. And um, so uh, we'll uh, continue, as I say, I want to stress the historical aspect and I offer, again, uh, some materials, in fact, from Dr. Atwood himself at the time of his uh, 25th uh, Harvard College uh, <coughs> anniversary of his graduation. He also went to Harvard Medical School, and uh, I'll give it to the board and to the proposals. And uh, a photo of Dr. Atwood uh, sitting off in his rounds with his one-horse uh, Shea uh, carriage. 
He served the town for about 50 years. He was elected to the Board of Health a few times. He was the town physician. And uh, I think of it now as we face a coronavirus. Uh, he practiced, of course, through the great flu epidemic in 1918. Anyway, he made a lot of contribution to the town. And uh, he and my grandmother was also active in one of the first women town meeting members were, well, I think, representative of uh, the best of Arlington and, and products and contributors of their time. So uh, I view the uh, site at 821 as not just a matter of saving the, the actual structure, but it's the appearance, uh, how it appears in the town. And uh, the Abbott family is good friends of the Noyes for many years. I still have an automobile which my mother bought from the Noyes dealership many, many years ago. And it's now a classic car. And yes, it is. <laughs> I keep it right here in Arlington. So it is a difficult problem, and uh, it's uh, long uh, due for solving, and uh, I think some progress has been made tonight, but uh, I would stress the historical significance of the, town, the house and the people that live there, what they contributed as a civic matter to the community, and uh, I, I, rather than, if possible, picking up the house and moving it, to me that's saving the house for the house's sake. Uh, Granted, it's not of the significance of the Jason Russell House, so it's, it's not just the, the house, the house thing. But I think the house in the location, and of course it's, it's so nicely situated there. And uh, <clears throat> I had a little reference to the interior of the house. Um, I lived there for a year and of course visited often. But uh, to me it was a very elegant place. I've submitted some other photographs. And uh, I remember very well the landing, which Mr. French mentioned. and. Um, also, uh, I used to do my homework in the doctor's office. He was in the nursing home, so it was, it was a magical place for me and almost encouraged me to go to med school with Dr. Wade. <laughs> At any rate, I think some progress has been made, and, and I just say I would like to see how it's saved. I'm not sure what the intent was back when the zoning requirements uh, provided for preserving the house. I mean, that's the issue I think we've all wrestled with. Well, what do we mean, preserving the house? So that's where we are. But I think that it's coming back, uh, what I'd like to hear when we talk possibly of some medical offices and maybe mixed use, keeping the house. So this sounds somewhat positive. So I, uh, I uh, encourage a solution and uh, thank everybody for all the effort they made. And I'd be happy to an mm -hmm. answer any questions if anyone has any. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Warden. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, John Warden, Jason Street. <coughs> well, I think uh, the the uh, applicants, uh, they ought to sit down with the Historical Commission at some early point because they have the jurisdiction under the uh, demolition delay and uh, to any change. It sounds like there's a lot of changes to the exterior of the house are, are being contemplated, so that needs to Bed with them <coughs> is having jurisdiction. Um, <coughs> I think the uh, a couple points here on, on which I, I disagree with the presentation. I think moving it out towards the street is not a very good idea, even if the sewer weren't there. I don't, I don't think you want the sewer running to the basement anyway. Um, the um, uh, houses, uh, you know, a house like that has a front lawn. It's not a very big front lawn. But it, it has a front lawn. It's appropriate for a house like that. It, and the houses on the opposite side of the street, uh, the reason they don't have big front lawns is, you know, the street was widened, and and, and they uh, so they, 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 they ran the sidewalk right up, so it all, actually almost touches the porch on, on the central house. Uh, but th that that's why those houses look to be so uh, so close to the road. Um, the, 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 I will, uh, I mean, I, I'm glad the house being preserved, but, but I think I think we shouldn't badmouth the building, saying, well, the important people live there, significant to the town, live there, but the house itself, not so much. Well, you know, the house was built in the 1890s, uh, just because, you know, it's 130 years old. Um, it's not the Jason Russell house, it's not the Jefferson Cutter house, or the Jarvis house, but it's... Um, it, it's a pretty old house, and it, it's a good example of the sorts of nice homes that used to populate Massachusetts Avenue before they decided to tear them down and put in the little 1920 strip mall things. Um, so, and it's, it's, it's siting, uh, and where it is, is a good idea. I don't think lining it up with CVS, I mean, the, 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 the big problem that a lot of people had with the CVS, and I was involved in that, in, in that process, 
uh, is, is it's too close to the street. And I think people have been happier if it's been uh, a little, like a little breathing space there. In fact, as uh, Ms. Ray pointed out, uh, that there, there was a requirement in the permit that there be some landscaping in front of it. The landscaping seems to be a, a slab of cement and bench, uh, which is probably not really usable open space in anybody's definition. So I, 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 would, uh, I, I would have some respect for the building itself and not sound like you want to tear it down to the studs and rebuild it. I, I don't think that's really being historic preservation. Uh, I think the, these houses, these are well built. They're, they're, not, like this, they're not like the, the stuff they put up today. And if you, as an architect, you know that. So I, 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 I would, uh, I, I'm glad it's being preserved. I think that that's the most important step. But, uh, but, but I think its siting is important, and I, and I don't know why you have to move it over to the, to the west, uh, unless you're going to put a driveway to the right or something. Uh, and of course, I haven't seen the plans. They weren't shared with you. But um, anyway, so there's, I see some good things, some bad things. I'm interested to hear the next chapter. Thank you. Other comments? I think it's important to point out to Mr. Ward and Mr. Abbott, the proposal is not to save the structure. It's not to what? Save the structure. Right? It's not to save the structure of the house. Right. That's what's they're, in your proposal. Taking, right. What they're proposing is to take down the house. So if nobody buys it, the house will be gone. What? That's, that's the, what's in the that, proposal. That's what's in the proposal. And I, and I know you can't see mm -hmm. that because the documents weren't here at a chance. I appreciate you clarifying that for yeah, thank people you. there. And that's why we'll, yeah. we'll have it. That's the whole point. Tomorrow. The whole point yeah. is they want to. The whole point is that the structural is good, okay, but it's difficult for us financially to work with the rest of it. That this is why I yeah. wanted to make sure yes. that people didn't leave with the understanding that you were going to save the house. We're not. So they're not. Well, that's right. That's not what I understood, Mr. Ness. He started off by saying we're not going to tear the house down, and now he's saying, well, maybe we will. No. No, maybe. That was why. I, was, I think suggested. that was the previous meeting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He said that. Yeah. Not this meeting. Uh, yeah. Previous meeting, he said that, yeah. and then they were going to investigate that, and that's why they spent, I don't know, two months, three months. Yeah. Two months. Yeah. yeah. Two months. Then we last visited, and they investigated it, and this that was the outcome, and that's why I said we went over, you know, what you need to change, what needed to be uh, taken care of. I mean, it's a three-story building. It's, it's once it's if you want to put any commercial space in there, you got to put an elevator in there. The central staircase took up the middle of the house. We went through all this whole mm -hmm. thing here. And this geometry of the house doesn't make sense to put anything that's like, uh, besides a couple of small office rooms. And that doesn't leave really vibrant. It doesn't, it doesn't work, make sense. So they're, they're presenting this, saying, if we do this, it gives us an opportunity to do something here that's substantial, that's mixed use, and so forth like that. And I think that was one of the options you were saying today. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That's just to be clear. And thank you for making that, yeah. Jan. I mean, but that, that's what I understood today. Today is okay. different than last time. Yes. But I think Mr. Wharton also made a good point that contacting the Historic Commission yes. and getting started with that process is yes. very important. We'll have to do that for sure. Parallel yeah. step. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get feedback from them as well. Yes, okay. Sure you will. Yes. Okay. Other comments from the public? Yes, ma'am. Well, I think another consideration. Uh, David Adams, oh, I'm sorry. Place. I'm Dorothy Nash Weber, and I live at 60 Bartlett Avenue. Thank you. And um, 10 years ago, when the special permitting was being done for CBS, I think part of the conversation was about the Atwood House. And actually, at that time, um, a very important element was to my recollection, that it be affordable housing. And so um, I just wanted to put out a few ideas um, for you all to consider. The maintenance, another element was, as we all know, was that um, the Noyes family, who's been here for a long time and one of our wonderful neighbors, um, that they, they were going to maintain the property for those 10 years, which hasn't really happened, you know, to be perfectly honest. So when we look at, and so I guess at the last meeting, the, the it was brought forward, well, we can't do affordable housing, the numbers just don't work. 
So we have to do market rates and now mixed use and now even tear down the building. So just as part of the analysis, I wanted to throw out um, the thought that one should look at those numbers and see which numbers have to do with, relate directly to not having maintained the property for 10 years. So, and in my opinion, those numbers should be minused out from the project because we should not be now having market rate property because they didn't, it was not maintained for 10 years. So I think one suggestion is to back those numbers back those numbers out, number one. Number two, I'd like you to look at it in the proposal um, you know, um, in some detail also, because if, as you, I'm, phone, yeah, I'm talking to the choir, um, how you, your design choices, your appliance choices, your molding choices, all your choices, in renovating a building would be different for low-income housing than for market rates. So in low-income housing, you don't need a marble countertop, et cetera. You don't need a $450 toilet that's part of the design family of the, what you're putting in the bathroom. So I would just really ask you all to, to, you know, drill down a bit and extract the numbers that I mentioned and look at the concept and decide for yourselves whether this could be an economically viable project for low-income housing and would that return still be Good, you know, reasonable. And so the return on the majority of the property from CVS, the 25-year lease with the extensions, is, is, is a sweet deal. It's really nice. And I would encourage you to just look at that, please. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Crystal Lurie, 56 Street. Could you clarify, are we in the public hearing right now? Yes, we are. Oh, I didn't realize it had been reopened. Yes, uh, it has. Has the board itself done an independent uh, assessment of the property by hiring its own structural engineer to see what they thought of it? No. no. I would recommend that, that you do that, um, because I think, I think you need to have an independent evaluation. I, I mentioned you know months ago when this first came up. This is this is a conclusion I knew was going to be reached, um, well, and I, and certainly you know you're empowered to do that. I, I suggest that before just assuming that it's uneconomical to save the building, that you get your own opinion for doing that. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. <clears throat> um, you want a date? Need a date. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know it's probably March sixteenth. That's my guess of the best of the hearing evenings because that's the technically the latest yes. of them. So I would suggest that moving it to March 16th. March 16th. So that means that we would need 16, 16, 1, 6. So that means we would need materials by 10th. Um, I'm sorry, pull out the calendar. I just don't have my calendar at all. The 12th. Sorry. Yes, please. The 12th. Okay. okay. We will have materials to you uh, in advance of that hearing, well in advance. Okay. We'll have them. And please, pro again, please provide these to the departments so that they can be posted. First thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. So we will, con well, we need to continue that. March. Yeah. Motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion. Second. Again, I'll be in touch with you. We'll arrange Aye. Can again. Okay. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank
Yeah, well, that's right. Well, let me know when. Folks, we have some. Uh, we have additional business to discuss. So if you'd like to discuss the Atwood House, own it. Please take it inside. If you'd like to have outside conversations, go outside. That's the first time. Yes, Kim. You and I are the same. Thank you. Chris. Okay, so moving on to our second agenda item is special permit docket 3616, uh, Taipei, Tokyo at 434, 434 Mass Ave. And I don't know if the opponent is here this yeah. evening. Yes? Okay. All right. Come on forward and tell us what uh, we're looking at here this evening. So this is now open. Walk us through the materials that they provide. <laughs> That's all right. We can have him come up if we ask. Exactly. All right. So please introduce yourself and tell us what. Uh, Charlie from uh, Vital Signs. Uh, you're going to right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Skaka. C A C C A. Thank you. Aragon Chijin, I'm in the building at 432, 432A, 434, 436Mass Ave. That's what the original addresses were. And for the last 100 year, 90 years, our family's been there. Okay. Aragon Chijin. It's probably Chijin. We'll figure out that. We have that material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, if who filed it spelled it right, but we'll, we'll take that word for it. Uh, so, okay. Walk us through what you're asking us for this evening. Well, he knows the details. So, the, he had uh, it, it previously was Shanghai Shanghai restaurant, and um, he had, they had a fire, and it's been closed for what a year and a half, almost two years. Almost two years. So what we we're doing is basically pulling down the Shanghai. He changed the name, and we pulled down the Shanghai name, and we put up Tape Tokyo. Same thing. Same same thing. Same signs. Same um, owner. Same yes. owner. Same size. Same size signage. Same correct. size signage. Same same owner. Yeah. So we just proposed to get an approval on the signs that are up there um, that are installed. Okay. Basically. The, the, signs, are, the signs are in the front. I yeah. agree with you. They're exactly the same. Yeah. yeah the sign that's around the side yeah. that's facing the parking lot. Yeah. Is that the same signs? Yeah. That is, yeah. I, I don't recall. That's all. I'm just saying. Yeah. You don't it's just it. recovered. It's recovered. Okay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's it's Tape Tokyo. It's, we okay. just recovered the They changed the name to try to. Right. It looks yeah. nice inside. Right. A lot of a lot of headache went into it. Yeah. Looks yeah. nice. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just getting trying to get approval from the board here to to say yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyone else have questions on this? Concerns? Well, I I have. Go ahead. Concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my concern is that it it doesn't comply with the current sign code. And um, I know that you've already taken the liberty of going and installing it, but it is over in both quantity as well as as well as size. And I I just don't see how we can approve them when it's but it's not compliant with the, with the current sign code. Yeah, I I I agree. Um, once the old signs came down, I think it was incumbent that they meet the requirements of the new sign code. Now there is, and I've thought about this a lot, and I went and I walked and I looked at it, and I walked around and I looked at it again, because there is a provision that allows us to grant, basically grant a waiver, it doesn't say waiver, but allow for the larger signs, more signs, etc., with some exceptions that don't apply to you when it's in the public interest, mm -hmm. and I don't, I haven't really figured out why it would be in the public interest to approve signs that are not consistent with the sign bylaw, where if it were consistent with the sign bylaw, people could still see the name, they could still see what was being offered, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I hate to do this, but I don't think I can approve something that's so far removed from what the sign by law requires. How much bigger is it? 
it's it's a lot, actually in my memo. It's yeah. a lot um, bigger. So it explains how much larger it is. I don't remember. It's on well, page twenty-two in the entire package. It, um, if I might, yes, oh, please. Um, older signs had uh, about forty-seven and a half square feet per sign. Um, these newer signs, well, two of the newer signs measure just over thirty-eight square feet. And the third wall sign measures 60 square feet. So it's a, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. And as, as I read the bylaws, and I'd be happy to get corrected, business sign district, wall sign one per business 40 square feet. Mm -hmm. So I told well, I. What if we. What is if that we accurate? No, you're, re you're reading it absolutely correct. Right. No, the, the, key, the key phrase in there about when you can grant that waiver. Yes, you have the ability to grant that. It, you know, in basically, we're talking about just so everybody's on the same page. Six point two point two C one, right? We're all we're all reading the same thing, yeah. and that does allow the board to do what we're talking about, but for the issue of the public interest. And, I can't and, find and if, public if the board does not, that's up to the board. Um, but that clean, would be the reason for for it. The nice, clean-looking, you know, signs, and uh, they contribute. I, I saw some of them on Mass Ave, you know. The last few days I've been looking, and you know that is. But I didn't know it was a one per business because that is one, two, three businesses actually. And then we changed. There were three separate stores there. So here's what happened: in violation of the sign rules, without a permit, you put up new signs. If we were to go ahead and approve this now, we would, in a sense, be saying. You know, you violated the sign rules, but that's okay, and we want to give you a We break. didn't know that. So. I know, I understand that, but they, you know, but they've been in place for quite a while now. And if we, I feel like if we approve it, we'd have to approve everyone who came before us, you know, and, and with signs that are bigger, more signs. So that's why I think if we were to do this, we might as well go to town meeting with a completely new sign by law. Because this is way outside the sign bylaw, and I don't. What, I, what, I what is need? What can we do to? Can we take down a side sign or something? Well, the side, side. You're allowed to keep the side sign. We're just talking about because the front. Yeah. The, yeah. the front. The front. The front specific. Yeah. Yeah. allowed yeah. you to keep the sign on the side that faces well, the guys. Most, so most, most of these restaurants in the, in the center are are. You know what? Side to side. You know what? I, I saw that, and if any of them were to take down their signs, and then they would have to comply with the new law. We're not requiring people to take down existing signs, yeah. in a sense, grandfathered in. Yes, but sir. when somebody's putting up new signs, I think that they need to meet the rules, unless we could find that there's some big public interest to allow a variation. I can't find a public interest in this instance to allow but it. But it looks so much better the way it is than if you have boom, boom, and then nothing. You know? I, and, I you know, they're trying to stay in business, which is not yeah, that I mean, easy. You don't know, I've lowered the rent you really from does. this to this to help them, which isn't an issue for you. And then this virus came up, which really was sort of like the last nail, you know, in the Coffin. Well, I'll say this. I don't feel as strongly as Gene does. I do, I do understand your point. And, and I'm, willing, I'm, I'm open up to willing to say it's an honest mistake. You didn't think you had to come before us. Okay, so that, I, don't think I, I don't think I want to penalize you for that. Okay? People make mistakes, and that happens. You're here. Mm -hmm. You're not fighting. You came up. Once you were notified that you, that, that was a mistake, you came up and addressed it. Mm. So. I'm not going to hold, I personally won't hold. I'm not penalizing them for that either, okay. but if they came with the signs as they were, without putting them up, we would have had to say they don't move yes. their requirements. So what I'm suggesting is maybe we come up with some sort of compromise, but mm -hmm. what Gina is, is saying is correct. We just can't just say these signs are fine because yeah. it's, 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 it's setting presence where we're, we're going to see continuation of this right here. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> okay, but is there a way we can we work can around move. this a little bit? Right. Uh, what kind of signs are these? Are these well, these are they're hand signs, right? Yeah, hand signs. Dark back, black color, so they're really receding. And then you have the gold lettering, which is half inch gold lettering. 
So and, then, and it's facing you know, from the light from like from the existing light above, right? Yeah, the I, don't, I don't know if it even has light above. I like those lights because it just lights up the sidewalk too. Oh, and it makes yeah, it's not yeah. internally lit or anything. Yeah. Um, it just it just encompasses the restaurant. It makes the restaurant look nice. And so can we look into things? And they can't really afford to make mm. new ones. I know that. Can we look at maybe removing one of the three signs in the front? Yeah, we can do that. What's behind it? Cement. Just, no, black. It's just, it's just Yeah, black. right, right, black. Uh, uh, like board, like the perimeter. Just horrible board. Yes. Is it plywood or is it uh, cement? No, it's um, a it's, sort of a metal -y, uh Yeah, it's like a metal finish. Tin. A metal tin. Yeah. Exactly that size. Yeah, that's why we covered them, because it was not too pretty. Okay. Not pretty at all. I uh, so he's gonna have to put something up there if we take these down. Yeah, I. To, uh, I, I tend to agree with Gene in a lot of ways, and it's difficult for me to do that. Not <clears throat> not because it's Gene, uh, but because I know that we have a business owner here who's struggling. And this mm -hmm. is uh, an honest mistake that he's made, but I, I do. Fear, you know, the president controls everything. If we made this decision now, going down the road here, uh, we're just sort of signal signaling that uh, anything goes. Uh, so I'm going to open this up to public comment, and I'm sure see if there are people in the crowd that wish to speak. Uh, we're also down a member this evening who may want to have something to say. So I would suggest uh, that there be a continuance here after the public comment period tonight takes place. Um, show us what, what you might be able to do. Work with Mr. Uh, <coughs> with the, the owner, I'm sorry. The name escapes me at the moment. Andy. Uh, oh, Andy. 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 And see what uh, what might be economically and re reasonable and feasible for you. At least I we understand. Yeah. I yeah. understand, but we're... we're yeah, I know. I know. So, I uh, yeah. I'm going to turn this over to the public. Uh, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak. And I will call on you, state your name and address for the record. Through an orderly fashion. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this? Okay. So, um, again, we have a very busy six weeks. I don't think it'll take too, too much time up in a meeting to put this on. Uh, I think we could probably squeeze it out on the 16th as well. We can. Just projecting ahead. Yeah. Come I mean, up with some options. Share them you, with the department. Can, uh, can you, I think you need to work with us. Before you get to yeah. finalizing March, everything and yeah. posting it March, for March twelfth, the yeah. the meeting itself is on March sixteenth. Yeah, let's let's see what we can do here to keep everybody. So you need to get all right, all right, everybody happy and in line. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I would okay. I would entertain a motion to continue this docket uh, <clears throat> thirty six ten to March sixteenth, twenty twenty. So motioned. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. We'll see you then. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a conversation with the department before. Say it again. Have a conversation with the department before that happens. Uh, you sure let's just make it up. We want a conversation. No, no. Conversation. Uh, yeah. you you? Before the meeting, have a conversation with with G. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was going to say you've been you've talked with Ali Carter. Yes. Right. Yes. So if you get in touch with Ali, we can follow up from there. Okay. Good okay. enough. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Gene. Thank you. The back is just the facade of the building. Just outline the text. I'm not sure it's not the case. It's defined as a reach as it's defined in the bylaws as the entire. You know, it wouldn't be assigned with the middle head of the unit. Yeah. Right. So I think that's the motion. Can you come on and tell us? I'm just trying to figure out what to say. That's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's, um, we have about five minutes, seven minutes before the next public hearing is scheduled. Yeah. Okay. 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 We have to start. Okay. 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 So amongst the four of us, I think I'd like to do some housekeeping just real quick. Um, so we have to wait until 8.30 to actually begin the next public hearing. Uh, so what I will do is just sponsor having the agenda for a minute. Uh, with that, David here, 
tonight, I think what I'd like to do is table item number four, which is the election of chair and vice chair. We have everyone here that will find a vote on that. Um, we will get to the debrief of joint meeting and select board after this public hearing. <coughs> um, <coughs> we can get through the lease extension for the retirement board in yes, seven minutes. Definitely. Why don't we tackle that right now? Oh, okay. We need to, so, okay, the, the construction next door is actually going to be starting in the next month. And as part of that, I need to move the retirement board to the second floor of the building, which means I need to amend the lease. And I also am changing the amount that's, that it's rented for as part of that process due to the constraint of having to have the move. Um, so. Also, not raising rent. No. <laughs> no, and it's also a very short term yeah. lease. Their lease is actually up by the end of June. Uh, it's June 30th. Yeah. So it's really just a temporary condition, and the best thing to do is to move them up to the second floor, figure out what to do with that space in the meantime, and uh, they have to pay the cost of their you know, moving and everything else, so it's a, it's a burden on them. So, there's no, so no, we're not paying any fit out? No, we are not, no. In fact, they're installing a door because it's separating out a larger office suite that's on um, the second floor. So what I need is the authorization to be able to um, enter into this. It's basically a, an agreement to amend the lease. And, um, <coughs> as I stated, it's <coughs> moving to the second floor suite, half of that suite, um, changing the rental amount for the remainder of the term, which will end on June 30th. So you're asking us to authorize you like to do that? Authorize <coughs> me or Andrew, I guess, to mm -hmm. sign that. You would, yeah, you would yeah. negotiate. So, um, and these are documents that are our lease standard lease agreements and lease amendment agreements that are authorized by town council. I have some questions. Okay. So, on the first page, mm -hmm. at some point it says, whereas the landlord and tenant desires extending the lease term until 11.59 p.m. on December 31, 2019. What, I don't know why that's there. What, what, what should that be? That's probably because I've been trying to update this lease. <laughs> <laughs> so what, that is there, my guess. Should there be a date instead of December 31, 2019? Or? It's, it's actually, it would be July. July. Yeah, it's extending the term of the lease through July 1st. of tw it's a, And it's 20. This feels like this okay. document got... Well, it's some 2019s in here that should be 2020s. The second thing is, so there are two leases involved here, right? No, it's an amendment to their existing. So it says leases. there's. It, oops, I did something wrong. It just disappeared. Wait a second. So their existing lease is just the standard model lease that we use with all of our tenants, all of the towns yeah. tenants. So this is just an extension of that term. First, it talks about a lease. <coughs> Um, one lease for the ground floor right office, and the second lease for the second floor suite. It's a second floor suite. Yeah. That where it stays at. That where it's But it says that there are two leases, one for the ground floor right office. Yeah, because they still have to, they, they are still going to be there for a number of days until they move upstairs. One of the things that confused me about this is it, it describes the first lease, then it describes the second lease, but in both cases it says lease. So I couldn't follow it through mm -hmm. and say which lease was which lease. So I think I think you would that, call it you would typically call it the lease and then the amended lease. Well or, well no, there's a lease for the ground floor right office and a lease for the suite on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So I think the first time you use lease, it should say where you have in the parenthetical. You mean instead of agreement? No. So it says, whereas a landlord had leased a tenant the ground floor right office of the building known yes. as the Central School, demise premises, blah, 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 under a lease dated July 1, 2016, and then there's an open parenthetical. I don't think it should say lease. I think it should say lease ground floor right office. Okay. Because right in the next paragraph, or the paragraph two down, the, it talks about the second lease, and it doesn't. And this is the lease for Suite Two Hundred Two A. The third, whereas and paragraph actually the third needs whereas, to be. That needs to be. We need to strike that. Okay, one. so that needs to be stricken because it's actually this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's, okay, and then the next one where the whereas, it uses the term lease, but I didn't know which lease it referred to, because there are two leases referred to above. 
So if you get rid of one of the two leases, that's fine. If you keep them both in, then you need to say which of the two leases. We're amending the original to. lease. So yeah, it, it would I, be helpful to say that. Then I think on, that's the lease that we're talking about, the term of the existing lease. Okay, so I think a little clarity, I think, would help. Then on the next the page, you can call existing and amended. So, okay. On the next page, on number one, it says any capital cosmetic improvements made by the tenant shall be reviewed and approved prior to carrying out work in suite 202A, which is fine. Are they leaving the ground floor? They're leave, they have to leave the ground floor. As of, for, for no, as of what date? Um, at the moment, I believe it's going to be in the next, by March 1st. Oh, so okay. That, so that, that is their to deadline to move. Okay. All right, so those are just my comments to clarify which lease is which lease. Yes. Well, I'm, I think existing lease and amended lease probably makes the most sense. And which premises the amended lease is for? The ground floor or the second floor suite. Okay. I've shown that sure. I yeah. understand that now, but I couldn't figure yeah. it out by reading. The so we can we can clarify that and <coughs> approve that administratively. If we want to give grant the authority to do to enter into this. Yeah, I, I would lease. I would move the authority to enter into the lease with the amendments we discussed. The only thing. Okay. Never mind. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Done. We will. I'll follow up with you. Yeah, I can help you. I can help you fix it. Um, I'm going to run it by Doug, too. Yeah. Okay. So it's 8.30. And we will move on to our third public hearing of the evening. Thank you for coming back. I apologize for the continuance here. Uh, we ran out of members. So. All right. So we're reopening docket 3504 and 93 Broadway. Here we open. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Walk us through what you're presenting. I'm Zeke Brown. I'm the architect working on the project. Kevin Flynn. I'm the owner of 93 Broadway and 8789 Broadway. Okay. So I say hi to the board again. We met back in 2016, and I want to thank, first of all, I'd like to thank Jenny and Aaron for the, I know, helping me navigate through this process. I haven't not been through this process before. Um, and for anyone who's not familiar with the situation, we, back in 2015-16, we were in the Gibbs School, and the town needed the Gibbs School back, and so we had to move. And we were fortunate enough to, uh, to get this property over at 93 Broadway and construct the building that's up there now. And I just wanted, for those of you who never, don't remember or never saw it, this, is the, this, is, this was the property, and this is what Zeke designed, that's what we, that's what we have there now. And I brought it to a couple other pictures in case you guys might be interested. You, you, you may have seen as you drive by the rooftop, it has a tarp up there. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, the rooftop playground, which is kind of an innovative thing that we've done for the kids. Hmm. And that's what uh, I thought you might want to see what that looks like. And but I'm actually very proud to report to you, because we, we talked about this at length back in 2016, <laughs> that we had... Um, uh, there was a question about what the transportation situation would look there. Remember, we talked about parking spots oh, yes. and things like that. We went around parking. Yes. And, but I'm incredibly happy to tell all of you that we've had a tremendous success with our bicycle uh, transportation program. <laughs> um, in fact, we, this doesn't even we have we have another rack in the back, and in what we're going to propose tonight, we're going to propose even more racks and some covered racks, and also some indoor parking of bicycles. Um, so that program has really worked out well. Um, so the, um, the lot itself um, sat there for the last year or two as I tried to figure out what to do with it. Um, and, you know, we looked at, I looked at different options because we were trying to defray some of the cost of, what, of everything we've done. But the reason we're here for you tonight is simply because um, we have a lot of families, I mean a lot of families, who have asked us to extend the school. Um, so I've made a change in our direction and what we're, we'd like to propose to you tonight is an addition up to the school with essentially a four classrooms. Um, I know it says five, but it's really four. The, the fifth is actually a gross mo into a gross motor space that we want to use. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Zeke. My architect. Well, I just one question for you too. Sure. 
that extra growth space, right, is for a different age group or just another class of the same age group? The, you talk about the gross motor space, Ken? No, the, the extra, the, extra. The addition that you're planning is. Oh, it's, yeah, it's going to be four classrooms of the same age groups. Okay. And approximately of the 72 children that would be there, about, uh, about four, somewhere we're estimating 14 to 17 of those children are existing parents who will have, you know, their additional children in that space. Okay. Oh, and I, I did want to, you, you may remember, <coughs> I don't know if you remember, but we talked about the dumpster area. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I wanted to bring you a picture because we remodeled the entire thing. No. Um, this is off North Union Street. Um, oh, and also, by the way, I don't know if I, we mentioned this, but the way we, when we did our transportation study, we, we, we actually built it. We put a camera up to overlook the parking lot, so we monitored this over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get our data, just so you're aware how we did that. Um, and, but the, 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 off North Union Street, where we have the service area, which is, you know, gated with the, that screen gate. Mm -hmm. But we remodeled it, so we put a walkway and everything in the back in order to have good access, you know, for, for all the service areas in the back of the building. Looks nicer. Yeah, it works well now, so. So the building, the proposed addition architecturally is pretty straightforward. It's really just an extension of what's already there. So uh, there was a request uh, to get some site context for this meeting. So I put together a site elevation. I measured, I measured these there to scale. Um, this is existing and the sort of blank spot here. And this is the proposed um, piece that would extend the daycare. And, and it's, it's in plan. Um, there's a 3D image of it here. This is the proposed portion. In plan, it's this. And really what it is, is it's a big open space in the basement, it's sort of this flex classroom. Two classrooms on the first floor and two classrooms on the second floor with office space in this kind of knuckle zone right here. The materials for the siding are going to be the same as, as what is already there. We're going to continue the cedar treatment along the top um, fence up here. Uh, behind that is a, an enclosed space on the third floor. Oh, on the second floor, sorry. Uh, right here. And that's going to be more built out as more offices as well. Um, that will largely be not visible from the street because of the screening for the kids, the fencing for the kids. Um, that's what I've got. Do I have questions? Do you have questions? Happy to answer questions. Well, can you go back to the elevations? Uh, yes. Thank you for uh, taking time to do the elevation. Yeah. Uh, I was a little nervous at first because. I thought the building was a lot closer to the, uh, the brownstone next to it. This stuff, yeah. Yes, and yeah. I was worried that the windows would just line up right, with the yeah. bedrooms and everything yeah. else. And it yeah. looks like you got enough space there, so I'm, I'm much more comfortable now. Yeah. Uh, at first, I was a little worried about that. Then, I don't remember the last time we were here, I, we gave you a hard time about parking, personally. And um, I, I drive through there every day. That's how I go to work in the morning and uh, I don't I don't have not seen an issue there as far as queuing up a parking and I, I figured there'd be a lot of cars all queued up every which way trying to drop off and pick up I don't see that so you guys done a great job in doing that and I, I don't see an issue here now uh, with yeah, and let, let me be, so I want to be totally frank with the port so we, the only problem we've had with parking has been over on North Union Street we've had uh, a, a, there's been a parent or two who, when they park over in North Union Street, mm -hmm. there's an apartment building next to us. And they park, they, you know, a couple times they parked in that, that parking lot. And we've already discussed, we've talked to the parents. But it's one of those things where they just, absolutely, that's what they do, they go and do it. And um, so we're, we're monitoring that sort of saying to prevent that from happening. Yes, I got to a board level, so 
Yeah, I think it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have one small request. Okay, again. Uh, yes. Um, and it goes back to the original project. Yeah. Uh, you show planters in the ground there. And then you went ahead and put those concrete uh, planters in the corner there. I know I you did. I know you put it there because there was a car accident there because I did. The light was behind the telephone pole or something like that. But Not just that, Ken. I'll be I'll be honest with you. Okay, we live in a world today where I have to take into account the possibility of uh, something much worse than an accident of someone trying to you know drive into the building. Okay. And I, I know Zeke and I talked about it. I know Jenny. We talked to her about it, but. It was really, it was, it's, uh, when we designed that front, it was all about what type of glass we put in, the structure of the building, and having massive pr uh, uh, planters in that section, because there's a classroom there to prevent any possibility of, you know, someone taking some type of vehicle or something and trying to get to the building. So that's, that was my thinking. I have no problem with the planters being there. You, you make it look a little nicer, that's all I ask. Well, we did. We Jenny asked us to sink them down, and we did. Yeah, but it's still this concrete box that you put plants in. Okay. Um, you line it or something, or put yeah, something? pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's uniform. It's all together. It wraps the corner. Is there any space? It, how big is it? Is there any space where we need to maybe push it back a little bit, putting those little plants in front of it? They are... Well, those concrete things are the planters. You know, it's a big two foot yeah. by yeah, four foot box. concrete energy dissipator. Yeah, yeah. What 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 are you suggesting? I, I just wonder is there any room? It, it, no, is, is there no? I leave them alone. Is there any room where you push it back against the building a little more? Oh, it's tight. So if you leave like you know four or five inches of passable planter piece to soften up the edge in the front. That's all. Zeke, I'll leave that to you. I, um, or, I think they're tight. They're I think there's about a two inch gap now. Yeah, so you're not gonna, no, you're not going to plant anything two inches. No. Yeah. But, but you, you know what I'm I'm just trying to think of creative with me. Rachel might have a better idea than I do, but uh, every time I drive by there, you have a nice, nice looking building. Okay, and I, I like it. Fines. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. It's just to hang down over the front. Well, well that. Like a trellis sort of thing. Now, Jenny, if I recall, though, there was certain kind of plants that you guys were looking to have in there. In the planter, it put, yes, in the planters. But now I think we're on to something different, potentially. I, I think vines might take away from the nice facade of the building. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want them going up here, but if they... No, really. It's just, it's just that box, it's not the walls. The whole building looks nice. Yeah, once you get rid of that plywood up on the deck up there, it looked a lot better. I, I'm open to any suggestions, but from a, but I will say that you know my, the number one priority concern for us is safety. Yeah, in every aspect of what we do. I'm not gonna. All right, we should look into that. You see, yeah. to, to changing that, we can, we can move on to the. That's all. What's actually proposed? I mean, right. It and sounds I, and, like and maybe I, we're just talking about the plantings themselves at this point. Yeah, I'm not changing. asking you to. Right. You know, we do the whole thing or, or do anything else. He's, is, is a way of you can soften up that corner a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. I, I should have been a little bit more pointed um, in presenting, but really we are asking for a parking reduction exactly the same as what we asked for originally. Yeah, that night I thought I said yeah. I was the I was one of the only one that was was had issues with parking. And I think you guys done a good job. On what you guys done before, so I, I think you're you're asking the same thing with the same space and same everything else, the same number of spaces. I'm okay. It's, with that. it's actually, it's actually even more in in it's better because this had six classrooms and we get three spots. This has got four, five classrooms if you count the gross motor, three spots. So the ratio is a little bit better, even. But we we calculate it based upon the, all of the rooms. That are provided right. all of the classrooms, yeah. right. so it's in right. the memo again. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, right. so it's not based on the yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm fine with what I'm saying. For me, is I'm fine with what you guys done there because you guys shown the fact that there was no traffic issues there. There was no, you know, I mean, the fact that I drive by there every single day, I see it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm okay with it. I think it's all been very successful. Actually. Yeah. I mean, I I agree. I, you know, unless somebody says something that changes my mind, I have no problem with that. 
parking reduction. I have two more curious questions. Anything else? Why is the new building so slightly tilted as compared to the other one? Um, because it's lining up with the buildings to the right. It's sort of working with the context of the of the street a little bit, and it's opening this, being a little bit more inviting, courtyard. That was that was the reason. And it, it looked to me, and maybe I got this incorrect, that there were some trees on the on the property line that would be taken down. Can you talk about that and whether there's any well? Let me see if I can. It was in the photo. It was in the photo. Thank you. It showed some trees that would that would look like would have to come down. I don't think there's any trees. No trees. No. Those are not on the property. There's, tree, there, there's are, trees on the fence line in the back. They're on the other side. Gene, you talking about these right here? Yeah. Right yeah. There's, there's one photo here, but it makes it look like they're on the property. But it, what you're showing us, it's it's just, it just it just went haywire. So they're not on the property. This one here. This one. Here. Yeah, the same one the little ones in front. No, the big one right there, right behind the. That's that's on the property line itself. It's it's actually the fence from the property comes up right up to it. So, so that's going to stay. Yeah. No, we're not. We have no intent to take that that's tree. That's that tree right there, actually. Yeah, that's that tree. Okay. In, yeah. So you won't take in down any trees. That I don't see any trees. In fact, we'll be adding trees. I was going to ask that because it didn't. Yeah. That was the other part of it. It didn't show, unless I missed it. And I just wondered whether you'd be adding trees in there. Yeah. In fact, if the if you have the one bigger, you can just add a couple of lines here. Which one? No, the one you the, the the photos. Yeah, the photos. I I can't see them here, but so you see these this this here. Yeah, this is an older photo. But if you drive by, if you drive by, I actually had new trees planted. Mm -hmm. um, we there were some very small trees that were there originally that we planted, mm -hmm. and I moved those over to, more toward the property line. And then I we planted some bigger and taller trees, actually right in front of the building. If you drive by, you'll see mm -hmm. them. There's two large trees, two larger trees in the beginning. So you're making a nice little courtyard. Over there, are you going to plant any more trees, or have you treed out? No, no, definitely one. The kids love. I mean, we see we plant them for shade, mm, right. for shade. Right. But the right this section here, we like to keep all. We wanted more green area, mm -hmm. so we're definitely going to be planting some trees in there, for sure. Okay. And we want some more additional screening anyway with the building. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it would just be helpful to show that. Going to happen, but that, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Rachel? I don't have any comments. I think it's a very thorough proposal. And, um, yeah. May I, may I make another comment from my, our quote customers, our families? They, uh, several have asked me, and actually I read the report on Broadway. Um, there's a lot of, uh, and they asked me to actually comment tonight about bicycle lanes and on Broadway. Um, the lack of them, right. Right. and it's a it's a, in our community. It's a big thing because a lot of our families do bicycle. They use bicycles. And if you look at the picture, you see that they're those bicycles are tandem. They have their children in the back, so it's a again it's a you know sort of a safety concern. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I hope the, the board and whoever's involved in the town, you know, un, you know, if I can add those comments to uh, the, to whoever handles that whole Broadway renovation. I certainly commend you for the commi obvious commitment to alternative transportation that you tackled with your employees and your parents. Oh, thank you. And your parents. It's, it's great. It's really it's really yeah. cool to see. So let's turn it over to public comment. If anyone in the crowd wishes to speak to this, same rules apply. Please raise your hand. I'll call on you to state your name and address for the record. Mr. Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chris Loretti, 56 Adam Street. Um, you know, I want to say, in, in, first of all, that I certainly support this um, change. I think this is a much better proposal than the mixed-use development that had previously been approved for that lot, which really um, dominated the triple-decker next to it. Um, I did have a couple of questions and comments about the parking, though. And I'm wondering, um, when you did the calculation of what the nominal parking requirement was without any relief, um, do you recall what the, what the number was? 21. 21. 21. And I thought I saw that 
even, even the applicants' materials that they expected, up oh, even with their reduction, eleven people would be driving. To, eleven employees would, would be driving to work. Yeah, I think that that was part of the. Yeah. And what's the total number of spaces provided? Yeah, and I think you talked about the ships that they worked and how they. So you mean how we handle yes. that? Yeah, we yeah. Th those who drive, we schedule their shifts. We they're they're inter you know they right. we have some will come in at seven seven fifteen, then another shift that comes in at like right. eight eight thirty type of thing. Yep. We do the same thing on the on the back end. Yep. But all weather there at one time. Is that what you're um, not really. It it probably works out overall to probably like nine on a consistent basis. Um, Okay, so I mean, essentially, you're you're just letting people to park on the street to meet the, the requirements. I guess you're uh, saying. The other concern I have though is about the location of the spaces, and I'm wondering how the proposal is consistent with uh, your section six point one point ten um, B parking in commercial districts for properties located in business districts. No parking shall be permitted in the front yard, nor shall any driveway directly in front of the structure be permitted. Um, now, it does allow you to make a finding that that's necessary and convenient, whatever that means, but um, I'm wondering if it wouldn't make more sense to put the parking on the side and preserve the front of the building as the open space. And that would probably allow you to put a little more parking into it. Do I get to answer that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it really, I think, just comes down to the amount of space we have on the site and needing a certain amount of square footage for each child in a classroom. And if you take that down to the state minimum, the classrooms are tiny and they're mean and they're not very nice. And I think people like this. Uh, business and what they do here because the space is uplifting and airy and open. Um, we did look at putting parking or, or massing it a little bit differently, but for classrooms, this is about what we can do. Yeah. Can you go up? We're at 34 and a half feet right now and we max out at 35. I actually appreciate the fact that you preserve the single curb cut as well. I think that that's, um, given that the parking is where it is currently, I I appreciate that there's not a secondary curb cut that you're adding. Previously, the whole corner was a curb cut. Mm -hmm. There was no sidewalk yeah. at all. That, that really helped the edge. <coughs> They utilized the existing garage that had been there previously, yep. which was in the back of the building, mm -hmm. as part of the rebuild of the entire site. Anything else? Thanks. Anyone else wish to comment on the, this application? Okay, we'll bring it back to the board um, and deliberate. We do have one member missing this evening, but I don't think that's material for this hearing. Um, I would just add break. one condition I think, okay. to finalize the landscaping plans, yep. um, which includes the planters yes. for the department. Yeah, and that can be done administratively through the department. Okay. You don't have to come back to us. Okay. Um, you know, I personally think that this is a uh, the, the kind of project I wish we saw more of. I think the design is is unique and innovative. Uh, the original plan took what had really been kind of an eyesore in the neighborhood uh, and really greatly, vastly improved that block. So you know, I, I'm glad I get to say that to you in person. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad you come back with something that, that's workable for you. Uh, I think you do a good job of keeping it in line with the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I appreciate the answer that you gave to Gene when he asked why is this side of the tilted a bit. And you can see clearly here on your on your drawings that it's exactly a fit with the curve yeah. of the street and the way those houses are. Um, it's it's very thoughtful. I don't think we always see. And I appreciate that. You've got great design. Uh, you're offering a service that every city and town in the region needs more of. So I'm sure you'll have no problem filling those classrooms. And hopefully your parking won't. Uh, and hopefully you won't outgrow your parking. But uh, 
that's that's more or less what I have to say. You know, I'm glad this is something workable. So I think I would uh, entertain a motion to approve their application with the additional com uh, condition that just mentions. Motion to approve with the two comments. One was, one was the. It's just one amended finalized yeah. landscaping plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that includes the. Yes. The planters. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 Agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so we still have uh, additional business to discuss. We're fortunately ahead of the city. Again, doesn't happen all the time. Uh, it's a good job, everyone. Uh, so as I said, just sort of moving through the agenda, I know some new people have come in. Uh, we're tabling item number four this evening. We'll do that when we have a full call on the board members uh, next Monday. I think so, yes. We'll do that as we'll the first next there's a meeting on March 2nd, yes. And it's not at the police station? No, it is at the senior center. It's our last we'll, meeting in the senior center. We'll cover that. We'll cover our our actual schedule at the end of the meeting before we do open forum. Uh, so next up is debrief and follow-up from the joint meeting with the select board, uh, which feels like forever ago, January 13th. <laughs> <It really is. laughs> so uh, I'll turn it over to Jenny to walk us through that. So I think from the agenda, you have the memo, which is sort of an outline of the process that we agreed to for the review of warrant articles. And then you have a, a schedule of engagement that we are proposing. And uh, this was actually already reviewed by the select board, by the way. So like a, a few weeks ago. Um, more than that, actually, at this point. Um, and I will just note that uh, we were able to start that process this morning by having our first meeting with um, myself, town council, Andrew, um, Adam, and uh, Diane to talk about the warrant. And we also have things that we will then bring back to the board at a future meeting to discuss. And, and it'll be sort of vice versa between the boards. Um, so we've already started to enact that process. And we also talked about having the uh, group meeting in July and trying to pick a day in July that would allow each board to have a separate meeting to kind of um, you know have their own individual meetings and then have their joint meeting at some point during one day essentially not it because it's hard to schedule lots of people in those meetings. So uh, unless you have any questions about sort of the, the structure and the process that we talked about at the joint meeting as it's written up in the memo I don't have anything more to say about it uh, other than to say I think it's a I'm really pleased that we have the process in place. I think it will be helpful for everybody to understand what's going on mm -hmm. um, and to be selective about when we choose to provide feedback by, to either yeah, it's, it's either every, And the meeting this morning was very collaborative uh, in the idea of how the, the two boards can continue to work together, carrying on with a lot of what we discussed that meeting back in January. Uh, I think it was it was very positive mm -hmm. uh, as far as the discussion went. Yeah. And how we can we can support each other and where we think it's appropriate to back off and let each board do it and so on for you. So I mean, I'm encouraged by how that went, and I think over time the results will bear themselves out in a positive way. So if there aren't any questions on that, um, then the, basically this engagement schedule is what you also looked at when we met on. Uh, back in January. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing I wanted to add is that I, I did make some amendments to it since we talked about it in January, which was also those amendments were made in preparation for this left board meeting when you were also supposed to talk about it at the February 3rd meeting. Um, and those things include sort of adding um, a couple of different <coughs> items. One of them is to make it clear that basically we're, we're trying to allow for participation throughout the process, um, and that wasn't necessarily you know, well illustrated by the spreadsheet. Um, so we've added that just to make it clear that it's it, the engagement is throughout the process. Um, we would be having, you know, the, the next step is really to broaden the engagement and just have broad open engagement, which means really opening it as an opening starter discussion about housing. So we have um, decided to do basically a question campaign to basically ask people about their, what they, to open-ended question about housing and to have the ability for people to come to 
places that will be located throughout the community. We've sort of started to look at, I'm looking at Erin now because she actually has worked on this with Kelly worked with Kelly Linema on and this engagement schedule and um, might actually want to talk about sort of how we decided to populate some of those engagements that will be happening, um, which includes the sort of front end portion of it. So in number two, broad and open engagement means uh, basically starting now, if possible, after we have this conversation, um, moving through May, um, where in May we would actually have a, a public forum, but there will be other opportunities because as we talked about at the joint meeting, public forum is not the best and nor is the only way to get people to engage in this process. And so we want to create multiple opportunities for that. Um, so that we would then sort of winnow things down into feedback, comment period, and ultimately by summer and into the fall, talk about policy development. So there are a lot of people who have, including us, have a lot of ideas about policies and solutions. We obviously have a housing production plan, which has very clear recommendations, mm -hmm. but there are new ideas that are coming up. We want to be able to structure that as part of the, the opening of a conversation and then getting into the narrowing of it by talking about policies towards the end, which would then ultimately lead to the construct of whatever might be submitted for town bylaw or zoning bylaw or both, presumably, mm -hmm. and then into a town meeting, which is, you know, I know we've been saying, first we said fall, then we said winter, and now it might just be an annual town Well, I, I think the conversation, That's not I, think, I think the conversation the important part. and the participation mm -hmm. by all of the stakeholders in the community and the buy-in, <clears throat> uh, us showing that we are sincere, and then the select board showing that we are sincere in listening to all things. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know, personally said in meetings and one-on-one -on -one with people that I am uh, open to all suggestions. I think we put everything on the table. And the time it takes is the time it takes to really get to a, a good outcome. Um, and so, <clears throat> where we had this town meeting um, remains to be seen in the next few weeks. But I think what we're saying is, is we're going to go through this process and see it through entirely and have the conversation that we've been asked to have with everyone that's willing and interested uh, and ready to participate. And I'm kind of excited about it. I'm terrified, but uh, <clears throat> it'll, I think it'll also be a good exercise for the town to go through. Can I ask one question? This I saw this right here, and uh, I thought we were also, when we last talked, we were going to broaden the subject to, to not just housing. And that's, that's some of the new ideas that Jenny, Jenny talked about and some of the conversations that's going to happen. Okay, so we did talk about uh, broadening this, it. This all began as, as a housing discussion. Yes, I realize that. But I think the housing discussion, we all agreed on this and, and have discussed this, has to happen as part of the broader town discussion on the whole. You can't continue to grow housing without growing commercial. Yes. And, and that has to happen, and, and solutions need to come from this process. And both of those ideas have to work hand in hand to get a good outcome. So, so it's in, it's mixed in somewhere in the schedule here, right, that, because uh, I, I, I see no, 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 no saying that, all I see here is housing. So, if, yeah. if, I, if I'm hearing correctly, so when we say housing, we also mean Commercial and business. Too. I think we mean development on the whole. Okay, we, I think we need to have to have that discussion on the whole. I okay. think this. Sorry, I'm being a gene here. No, no, no. I think there's, words, a broad, but there's a broad <laughs> for us to discuss on development on the whole. Yeah. Okay, because I think I, I think we have to do both. I can't see us doing only a one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it has. It, it won't be balanced. No, I think we said it in the meeting. It has to be done as a holistic okay. approach, okay. where we discuss the role of uh, how growth is done wisely uh, and how it encompasses both residential and commercial development. So. And to your point, Ken, I think that that needs to then inform the, the questions and the prompts that we... Yes. Mm -hmm. That we... Right, but in an, in an open-ended way, sorry. To yes, get totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Yep. So that, that's, that's why it's just, it's broad, mm -hmm. open questions, not leading questions, and not questions that are about a policy solution. Right. Yeah. So. That's that's the starting part. Good, good. Anything else on that agenda item? All right. Very quickly. Say that probably very soon after we are going to 
begin scheduling things and yeah. we'll keep you informed about yeah. that. Do you want to share anything further about yeah, that? Yeah, so just quickly, um, we are um, going to have um, in-person tabling events that are generally informal through like mid-March to mid-ish April, um, where you can talk to me and Kelly in person. We're also setting up a phone number that people can call in and leave a message about their question. Um, we're setting up an email address um, to be able to do that. I'm also looking into um, other online tools, whether it's through a text response um, or through a more simpler use of SurveyMonkey. Um, so trying to hit at all ways that people might be keen on um, talk, you know, responding. You don't have to talk to me if you don't want to. You can talk to a voicemail, <laughs> which um, might be in, might is not that it's something that I think Arlington has done before as a way to engage with people. So I think that um, trying these new ways to enable people to be comfortable with how they're talking to the town. I like I understand. like the idea of that because you know so many of these meetings by necessity happen at night mm -hmm. and it gives people another forum to have their voice heard. If they can't get out of the house, they have kids, or they have other commitments. Yep. They have other ways to have their voices heard. I like that. And then lastly I'll just point out um, to the folks that are here and people that are going to be listening on ACMI the town survey is open and there were questions related to housing included in that. So I just encourage everyone if you haven't done the town survey to complete it um, because that data that we get out of there for the questions on housing um, will be informative to the process as well. Um, of course, the other topic areas that are covered by the town survey are just as important. So, um, you know, if you haven't done it, take the town survey. So um, that's it. But that, that's coming up quick, um, so there'll be information put out there um, very soon. Okay, great. All right. So next up is final Broadway Carter report. Do we need to do anything beyond acceptance? Uh, no, it was we just to. to just know that it's out there. I think it. Oh, sorry, it's just to accept it. Still it's just it. perfect. Oh, so yeah. It's either oh, the I'm architect or, okay. or, or right. yeah. I'll follow up with her. No, it was just to, you know, announce to you, to everybody, that this is the final report. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what is still online is, a, mm -hmm. you know, the PowerPoint presentation. Obviously, you saw the draft of the report. This is the final one. It has gotten very favorable reviews from many people. I think a lot of people like sort of the boldness and creativity that mm -hmm. was demonstrated by the students here. And, you know, there's a lot of really interesting ideas that would be wonderful to immediately capitalize on, but <laughs> involve many different property owners and um, yeah. you know, a lot of different moving, some action. moving parts. But then there are things in here that are perhaps quite actionable and including things about bike lanes and mm -hmm. things about mobility and things about um, streetscape and street corners and, and quality of life in general. And so I think that those are things that we will be looking into and picking up on. A lot of people have asked if we're planning to do anything next on this, and <laughs> we'll just say that we're probably post-town meeting is when we can really pick this up in earnest mm -hmm. again. Um, there are a couple of warrant articles that, really, or one warrant article, I think in particular, that relates to this. That's basically a resolution to have a design competition. I don't know all the mechanics of it, but I think we will end up talking about it a little bit more um, into what that petitioner um, envisions. but. Um, I think just in general, people have a lot of interest. I will just also add that we ended up um, deciding to work with one of the students through prof a professional affiliation that is offered by MIT through the Humphrey Fellow Program, and um, he's you know going to be helping us for the next for basically thirty days um, and and doing research and sort of guiding us through a number of things related to town meeting. Yeah. Um, Great. So yeah, he might. Um, he will try to attend some of our hearings upcoming, so yeah, you all have a chance to meet him. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. So that was all. Just yeah, to it's exciting. Share this it's, and it's, and I think I said this one when they came and gave us the final presentation. Um, it's a really unique look at a part of town that doesn't get a lot of attention, you know, for better or worse. And I think there really are some compelling ideas in there that you can pick up and run with and dive a little bit deeper into. So, um, speaking of diving deep into things. 
have to look at the minutes from <laughs> several meetings. Yeah. So can we do that without David being here? Yes. Or? So long. Um, I, I think everybody was. I, I don't think we've missed anyone at any of these meetings. Uh, so we'll begin with December 2nd, 2019. Um, I'll just take comments from, from those of you that have edits for those and we'll just incorporate them. We were all at that hearing, so we're all able to vote on that. Is that the one you made, the, made the, your comment on? Which one was that? Um, That's not for a while. That one. I have nothing on this one. On this one, um, I, I think this happens in a lot of them, and I just wonder if we can start doing this a different way. Um, when we accept the minutes, we usually have discussed what the amendments are we want to the minutes, and we accept them with the amendments, but then when we look at the next minutes, it just says accept with amendments suggested by the board. I think it would be better practice to actually put in. I don't think we need to go that deep minutes, since so but, many of them are just wordsmithing. Well, some, some of them are just wordsmithing. Some of them are a little bit more. And the record is there on, on, okay. on ACMI okay. to see exactly what happened. That was my only comment on this one. Okay. Motion approved this minute. Uh, what call do we What's the date of it? December, December 2nd. 2nd. December 2nd, 2019. 2nd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, January 6th. <coughs> On page three, mm -hmm. the third line from the bottom, yeah. it should be design competition, not design competition. Got it. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's completed already. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing I have. Right. 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 Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, that motion. It's okay. Uh, January 6th. Yeah, everybody was there. Motion to approve January 6th as amended. Uh, as amended. Second. 80 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 January 13th. And this is the joint meeting with the select board. Yeah, I did not receive any comments back from them. By the way, I did provide them the same draft minutes. Okay. I don't know done. if they were looking at them tonight, actually. If that's possible. That's the 27th, right? No, the 13th. 13th. Um, do you want to table these just to make sure that we're not voting and then have to reopen? Posting um, as a draft? You no, know, it, it's been posted for a while, okay. actually. And I provided this to them as soon as we finished them, which is also allowed. OK, I just did, if they're discussing it tonight, they have changed. I don't actually know if they are. Okay. So, And I don't know that we're ever going to find a similar date that we're all talking about. No, I just meant if, if you wanted to reach out to their Marie, yeah. just to get an idea of whether These are very detailed compared to the minutes that they typically write. And okay. So I think they were quite comfortable with them. OK. Um, was my I just want to have to come back and reopen them. <laughs> I will. I will let you know. I don't right. have any comments. I didn't either. No. Okay. Okay. So. Do I, have to do no, I want to thank Erin on these. That Erin is the one who wrote these meeting minutes. She did a fantastic oh, yeah. job. Thank job. you. <laughs> So Rachel has made a motion to approve. Second. Okay, has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 And January 27th. On the fourth paragraph, where it says... Um, on the first page. First page. Um, Ms. Varco explained... Oh, ration. I think, I really think it would be helpful to have a little more detail there, because she gave a really good explanation, which helped inform a lot of the rest of the discussion. But it doesn't. It doesn't say what it was, and I think that's oh, yeah. actually no, we more can, important than some of the other stuff I'll, that was in here. I'll work on getting a, a summary. No a summary would be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. This is this is not the part of the meeting that I attended. Yeah, actually, so. that's right. Um, on also down on that page a little more, um, it says, uh, Mr. Benson has about the shadow study. Comma, the hotel shadows will hit the neighboring building. I think it should say 
Mr. Benson asked about the shadow study and if the shadows would be cast on solar rays in the adjacent residential neighborhood, the response was shadows would not be cast on the existing solar arrays. This seems as if I said they weren't. Oh, they weren't. Yeah. And I, I asked, and the response was no. that they weren't. Um, Oh, that, this, yeah, to... on page three where it says, Mr. Lau, thank you for reminding me. Mr. Lau moved to approve the 50% fee waiver. Mr. Benson seconded it. It was the other, way, the around. other way around. I moved to approve and, and Ken okay. seconded. Okay. On the next page, um, it says, Mr. Benson asked about the traffic volume study and how the Brookline numbers were used in the study. And yeah. then it doesn't have what they said. I don't remember what they said, but I think they said something about how they were used in the study. So I think something needs to be headed there. I think that actually, that sentence sort of belongs with another paragraph where I think he did explain it. Okay, so if you want to move it, that would be fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's it's in the order where it actually happened, but I think, okay. I think it was described prior to that, but maybe I'm... Is that like in the presentation, perhaps? Um, I don't really, wasn't really sure what, where it would go, but when I saw the sentence and then didn't see. Uh, I think Gina asked said, the question and they answered it. Yeah, so. Oh, all right, yeah. there was so an answer. Their answer should be, they did answer it. They did answer it, so the answer should be there. Okay, all right. All then right. a little Investigate. farther on that page where it says, Mr. Benson moved to approve the warrant articles as drafted. Yes. For town meeting, it was with one amendment. Because we made one amendment oh, as, yeah, mm -hmm. that's as right. amended. So right. it needs to say as amended. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I recall that one. That was helpful. That, those are the ones that I had on, um, on the meeting minutes for the 27th. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments on that? I, I moved to your last meeting. I moved to accept. Uh, yes, because the, February 3rd would have been our third day. I moved to accept the minutes of January 27, 2020 as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good work. Thank you. Good work. So we'll get to Thank open you. forum in a minute. I just very quickly want to go through the next well, the month of March <clears throat> because we're going to be very busy. Um, either Jenny or I will follow up with David to be sure that he'll be at every meeting. I don't think you've gotten any comments back on these hearing dates. No, and I mean, everybody was affirmative in terms of okay. being able to attend. I just, so. I, I, my, my purpose behind this is really just to sort of read this out in public to get it on the record because we're going to be all over the place. I have it here. You're the same. Uh, actually, you have it here? Yeah. yeah. So the next, the next four meetings, Monday, March 2nd, 2020, uh, 7.30, beginning in the Central School Main Room, which is next door. Uh, Monday, March 16th, beginning at 8.30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 16th is at 8 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we, we have a hearing. The project. Oh, um, so the meeting will still begin at 7 30, but the warrant, we'll, we'll yes. warrant article discussion will begin. Yeah, warrant article. But this we'll is just really we'll start at 7 30. You start at 7 30. Yes. Okay. It's we'll just the, the warrant article. Yes. We'll be in the Lions hearing room. Oh. Um, on the 16th? On yes. the 16th. You shut that out, Rachel. Right? It's out. I'm, but, I'm reading this into the record so that anybody watching on ACMI. This is all in an email to all of you. By the way, all of these dates and the locations and all the information. Also, this document is posted on the town's website, which is the entire package that's posted as part of, and it's also downstairs in our at our counter, and I think in other locations as well. Yeah, we're busy and we're in different spots, which is just why I'm going through this now. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday, March nineteenth, beginning at seven thirty, in the Arlington Police Department community room at one twelve Mystic Street. I don't know how to get into the police department. <laughs> I don't know where to park. Which is right on. So <laughs> I'm in the same boat as most what people. Uh, the 19th. March 19th. Really? <laughs> into the meetings. Oh. Yeah, into meetings. Okay. And Monday, March 23rd, beginning at 7.30 again in the Lions here in Rome. So you've sent this out in an email? Yes. Yeah, because I have it all on my schedule now. Yeah. yeah. We all have it. Again, Everybody I just want to read it out at a meeting so that folks right. who watch it on ACMI and know the website or yeah. you know, know that those <coughs> meetings are taking place in foreign countries. The document should look familiar because this is the same kind of template document we've been using now for all of our prior town meetings. Yeah, and, and you've also got walk through with everything that you're going to be looking at. 
we also have a walk uh, yeah we have a walkthrough of what we're going to be discussing so if you have any questions before we get to those meetings uh talk to jenny or aaron or me and we can point you in the right direction because uh these are going to be busy nights and we're going to have to vote toward the end like we did last year um, i don't think there's going to be the same kind of rush with amendments and changes that we had last year but uh, I do want to make sure that we're giving people that <clears throat> there are a lot of citizen articles. And I want to make sure that they all have the time to be heard. Uh, and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for public input in a, what's really a condensed period. So um, this is on the website. So if there are people out there who want to comment uh, electronically or otherwise, I would encourage them to do so as well if they're unable to make one of those nights. The one out of those from a citizen's group. Will be online where we get hold of them, or everything yeah. is in that package that I just mentioned. Yeah. This everything is in here. All the warrant articles. Are yeah, I saw that, but it's, it's not that detailed. It's just yeah, it's time. not it's yeah. not the zoning amendments no, because some of them still need to provide the actual amendment yes. to us. Some of them have because it's very general right now. And so yeah. we've so asked. The warrant, but not the amendment. We have asked every applicant, uh, every applicant, every petitioner, to um, provide us with documentation so that we can post it prior to your meeting. I don't know if we'll get it sooner. If we do, of course, we'll provide it, but they have a timeline. We've been in okay. touch with everybody at this mm -hmm. point. This would be nice if we get like maybe a week beforehand. So yeah. we actually get a chance to read and understand it. Well, right. since this. Monday is your first hearing, yeah. I, I think you're going to get it on Thursday. No. Yeah. Even, even <laughs> Thursday <laughs> over the weekend is, is fine. That's fine. At so the moment, at that's least what we have. better than that, that day. Yeah. We, we requested it. As soon as it was actually the, the day that we posted everything, we requested all of that information from every single petitioner. And if I did get it that day, I reserve the right to continue to hear. Um, okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about there. Uh, so I'll move to our last agenda item, which is open forum. I know there's some folks in here who wish to address us. Uh, I won't necessarily take any action or anything. This is. Uh, public's time to make comments. So, Mrs. Warden, I'll call on you first. Patricia Warden, thank you. Um, at the December presentation of the Dolph MRT Broadway report, the increased tree recommendation and pictures were good, but there were a number of serious errors and misconceptions. Fortunately, Mr. Um, Lau and Mr. Watson made very helpful improvements in the students' um, traffic and parking suggestions. The report is financially and environmentally irresponsible. It makes no estimate of the devastating financial consequences on increased school population in the overcrowded 500 student Thompson School. One of the student leaders said that the reason why they were recommending increased dense housing was because in all of Arlington there are only 93 units of affordable housing and so Arlington must build more housing. But this is wrong. The planning department surely could have informed them that Arlington has over a thousand subsidized affordable housing units and about 2,000 more naturally affordable units. <coughs> there are 175 affordable family units provided by the Arlington Housing Authority, just down the street from Broadway. In response to my concern that the report could lead to massive evictions and um, displacement in Arlington, the student leader said that no zoning changes would be recommended. But we can see that this was not correct. This final Broadway report does recommend massive dimensional de density rezoning. Um, so what happened? The report's recommendations are very similar to the Planning Department and Metropolitan Area Planning Council's recommendations that of last year, which were rejected by town meeting. So the report is just same old, same old. The Broadway report opposes recommendations of the town's hazard mitigation report. It even chooses its focus site for dense multi-story housing. The Sunnyside, Marla, Inegi area, an area across the street from a female-designated flood-prone region and endangered by global warming. It also ignores the Hazard Report's recommendation to acquire available open space for recreation and flood water storage. I'm sure there are some who like the report. Landowners, architects, construction and real estate interests. 
including the lawyers, but none of the Broadway residents I have spoken to likes it, and some are horrified. The report is simply a manifesto for misery. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish, wish to speak here in this portion? I, do I need to come up there? You can just stand up and um, tell us who you my are. My name is Wendy this. Richter, and I am the uh, open space liaison with uh, ARB. And I just am trying to be present more and watch more. And so I just wanted you to identify so you know who I am and um, know that I'm going to be trying to you know bring things that come up here back to the open space and vice versa um, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. It's important to note Wendy is actually also on our design review group and on the master plan of the implementation committee. Yeah. He does a lot for us. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Go ahead, schedule. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everyone. Aye.